This is tape two, continuing the video report on the study of abandoned and inactive mines near the town of Dixie in the Nez Perce National Forest in Idaho County, Idaho, made in the summers of 1999 and 2000. Please review the beginning of tape one for location information on the mines described on this tape. No video was taken at the Dillinger mine, site number EC200. The next property is the North Star Mine, site number EC195. All workings of the North Star Mine. You can see the uh, little ladder here. I don't know how far in it goes. Can't see over the top. I'll put her up there, maybe we can see. Goes in a ways. And uh, we come down here to the to the dump, and I kind of like this property. It's got the little cabin there, it's got the old steam boiler. Uh, I don't know if it's a grinder or what, what it is in it. These are all patented claims, by the way, in here. They've been sold and are now being subdivided into housing tracks. So, yeah, it's an old compressor. Uh, I don't know if you can see it or not. Yeah, you can. There's a brand new house being developed right above. Here, I'm not sure exactly which way this tunnel went in, but uh, probably if it caves, it wouldn't bother them that much. And uh, dump out here that's kind of hard to measure. It's been kind of picked at, but it's not insignificant. Several hundred feet of workings in this thing anyway. Quartz in granite. Uh, Looks like on an average the dump is probably oh 50 feet long and from the cabin over about 30 feet and then down on the slope down to the road probably a total of 25 feet down there. So dry, not but open so could be a hazard especially with all these houses going in here. Kind of surprising that they haven't plugged it up. There's new roads everywhere. We were just out at the, we didn't visit, video it, but we went out to the Dillinger mine and they're putting a new house right over where, as I recall, an old ad it was a few years ago. Everything else has gone out there. So with that, we'll get a couple still shots and that'll be it for the uh, old North Star. This unnamed prospect was given a site number B7169901. Friday, July 16th, and uh, we are at an adit which is on, at the top of the road that goes down to the Pendixie mine. And uh, we photographed this one a couple years ago. And you can see the adit is indeed open. It's got a fair amount of timbering holding up the uh, the portal. More overgrown than it was back then. All this area up above here, this was this was open all the way on down to the bottom last time we were in here. And we'll zoom on in on that, see what we can see, but it's open open in there for a ways anyway. And easy access. Cribbing holding up the bank in the back. And as we turn around and look, we are looking out past my pack there, out to uh, the edge of the waste dump, which goes across the road. We're about uh, maybe 200 yards down from the main road that goes up into the patented claims. Uh, this is pretty easy to find. There's a brand, there's a big house, the first big house that you come to on the right as you're coming up this road stop right there there's a big pull out 
stop and there's you can barely see it but this is where this road takes off just in front of this house and goes off to the west and we'll look down over the uh, edge of the dump down in here it's not an extensive working it's this grussy looking granite material and we're going to give this property the number B seven sixteen ninety nine oh one The next property is the Penn Dixie Mine, site number EC193. Nineteen ninety-nine, and you're looking at the Penn Dixie Mill. This is probably one of the most photographed sites in the in the whole area. Uh, if I can get it over there without the sun angle in it, right up in there, you might be able to see the dump. That's the twin ad, it's up above there. We'll go up and get a picture of it, it's all caved. Uh, there's a waste dump, or part of it, across the creek over there. Goes out there quite a long ways. And you might be able to see the porch on the guy's cabin right there because we're not more than 100 yards from the, the main road, which goes through Dixie, which is, perhaps you can see it, right down through there. So you can walk up here either way. You can go just through the end, edge of Dixie, past the cemetery, bypass the road, or you can go up the way we did and walk down the hill. In either case, you'll end up at the Penn Dixie Mill. There's a drawing of this in, in the history that we have. And we'll go up and get the address. One interesting thing is about halfway between here and the top of the hill, there's another very large dump, and I'm not sure that that's not the one that's shown actually on the uh, topo map. And the new one that we filmed that was our first property of the day up there may not be on the topo map but uh, we'll see as we get up there so we'll move up to the dump now and we've moved up to the great big upper at it as you can see totally caved there is a looks like a prospect pit or a small added up above here trenched all the way out down to the dump now apparently there was a at it below this one uh, which has a dump that goes off from down the valley We'll take a look at it. There is a little access road that brings you up onto this particular dump, which is uh, doesn't have a huge surface area up here on the top, but as you can tell when you look off the nose, there is a lot of stuff up here. Okay, now we're in that upper at it. The mill site where we're at is right down there, and that's the the, the, the boards and stuff that we saw from the mill have fallen down right over that edge right there. And then down here, right between the mill and where I'm standing, is where the lower at it would have been. It also is caved and dry. And you can see it going out onto a long skinny dump that goes out uh, towards the creek. But based on the size of the dump, this was certainly the main kahuna in here. It's well over a hundred feet thick here on the nose even though as I said there's not a, a huge surface area you can see back to the adit level there from, from where we're standing. So uh, part of an old down cabin or structure down right down at the base of this dump. Uh, we'll go down and we'll take a look at that. We'll probably get a still picture of that dump going out from that lower at it down there but this gives you a pretty good uh, overview of spatially of how the main workings are setting in here. If you go from the dump as I said if you go in that direction about a hundred yards you're onto the uh, main Dixie road that's going from south end of the town of Dixie right there uh, it heads on down to the airfield and to the Dixie workstation. So overall that's kind of a good uh, look at the uh, Penn Dixie mine. The lower dump now, we were standing right up there on the top of that dump when we took that last sequence of the upper at it. This is the caved lower at it, again dry. I should mention that one up above does have a very small seep on it that disappears into the dump. There's this lower one as we turn around and we look out here we can see uh, the tree and part of, uh, part of the dump out here, it goes out here, oh, probably a good hundred feet. 
It's about uh, 15 feet wide and maybe 15 feet thick at the most on this lower dump. It gets out pretty close to the creek. You can see uh, with a little, if I get around here, better angle. Always seems to be a dead tree in the area. Yeah, you can see through there, if I zoom in on it, one of the houses on the south end of Dixie. And certainly now you can see the, uh, the road, the main road sitting out there. I choose to come down from the top just because I don't want to wander through all that wetland down there along Crooked Creek. But we're just across Crooked Creek right here. And I think overall, unless we find something else, that uh, pretty much does it for the main workings. There's the mill right there again to locate you. The attic that we're at, the big dump up at the top, that pretty much uh, does it for the Penn Dixie. I'll give you a good overview of the size of that upper dump, which was obviously the main working. Pretty good size, easily 100 feet thick I think in there. And that'll probably do the video for the Penn Dixie unless we find something else except. July 16th, 1999. We've been walking east back up the road from the Penn Dixie mine. We're about halfway to the new workings. That new adit right at the top of the hill. And this is the one that we mentioned. Obviously a very caved adit. Totally dry. Going out onto a substantial dump. Uh, interesting enough about this property is the, uh, it's kind of a Y-shaped adit. It looks like there was another tunnel branched off of it as we'll show you in a second here. Okay we're back with you that was the Y that one, one leg that we just came down and there's the other one a shorter one it's either a little cave inside or something anyway comes in kind of makes a kind of a Y shape they are obviously using wood rails with steel cap or iron caps on them you can see a piece sticking out of the ground right there and so we're standing right at the attic as I turn around we're looking out over probably 80 feet anyway of dump and the key to this spot is that old cabin which sits right down there to the left as I'm looking north right now. So that would be on the west side of the dump. Sits right off the edge of the dump. It's pretty easy to see. Uh, actually it's not a cabin, it was an ore bin, I think. We'll see if there's any sign from the other side. Yeah, it's an ore bin. It's got, you can see the sloped board going out that hole right there which would have been the loadout shoot for it. Probably to haul ore down to the Penn Dixie. This may have been part of the Penn Dixie, although I don't believe it's either this one or the one up the top of the hill here is not on the uh, topo map. So we'll Garmin in this site as we did the Penn Dixie. We're looking down uh, well over 100 feet of dump here on the nose. And looking back at the attic, you can see even though, again, it's not very wide, it's where the rails came out. Had one set went out that way another set that came out this way. Uh, they moved a lot of material out of there. There is a road comes off of that road going uphill that comes into this attic. So it's pretty good size. So with a closing shot of the locator cabin uh, we'll call it quits for this unknown property that we're going to give the number B7169902. These two unnamed prospects were given site numbers B716-9903 and B716-9904. July 16th, 1999, we're at an unknown attic we're calling B716-9904. It, has, it is open. You can see we have a picture of it, but you can see about an 18 inch opening right at the top of the portal. Uh, there's a seep that comes out of it. The dump is pretty substantial. It's at least uh, 60 feet long, 30 feet wide, and about 12 feet thick in here. And the important thing is it sits right on the other side of the 222 road from that cabin. It's one of those unnamed adits. It's uh, just, we're about a sixteenth of maybe an eighth of a mile south of where the 222D road turns off just past the Dixie Cemetery. And uh, this cabin ought to be fairly distinctive. There's a power uh, transformer or whatever, step down whatever, sitting right out in front of it. And the dump's right across the road. You can see it easily from the road. It does have the open at it though, so it is a hazard. This unnamed mine was given a site number B7169905.
16th, July 16th, 1999. We're at a added at mile marker 32 on the main Dixie to Dixie Meadows Road, which is a 222 road. We're south, actually, of the town of Dixie a little bit. A very, very large dump along right along the road. It's on the north side of the road. It's got to be several hundred feet long. We'll pace it off. You can't miss this thing. There is an access road that comes on up from the 222 road on the let me see if this is north the uh, west end of the dump comes on up into this adit which uh, you can plainly see is indeed open uh, there's a bunch of wood and so on down here blocked with big bolts in it I have no idea what uh, this, whether this was a cabin or whatever out here and there is indeed water coming out of the adit to the tune of uh, oh probably two gallons a minute maybe a little bit more than that it's cooking right along it comes down here and uh, flows on out and then into the waste dump here not to reappear although if it does it's probably in those bushes now there's 222 you can see where it curves around and comes on down the mile marker signs right down at the base of the dump down in there big dump uh, at least a hundred feet thick in here uh, the widest part from the adit on over here to the edge has got to be 50 feet and a big circular area in here at least 50 feet in diameter that's a hundred foot thick uh, we're going to pace it along the road it's probably the easiest way to get an idea how long this is anyway big uh, a big mine open at it in the solid granite so it's open probably for a long ways in there and mostly granite with some bull quartz hardly any sign of mineralization at all on the dump little iron staining in some of the granite as you can see so uh, Crooked Creek the main drainage that comes down through Dixie of course right on the other side of the highway there so you can easily find this one just look for this monstrous dump right along the road don't mess with any of the little ones there's a couple little ones this is the big one and we're going to call that We'll zoom in on that opening again and call it quits for this property. By the way, this could be the ace in the hole. Uh, we're going to find out. It is, it's shown as a little ways down the road, but this might be it. This next property is the Bonanza Mine, site number EC192. This is uh, July 16th, 1999. We're at what possibly is the Ace in the Hole or the Bonanza property. This is a shaft and pit located just on the west side of Hundred Dollar Gulch uh, as shown on the uh, topo sheet. The uh, pit is uh, right behind this tree here. And of more importance is the shaft, which I'm sure everybody has been have no idea can't see how deep it goes uh, how far it might be open whatever it looks more like a decline actually uh, the dump from if this dump is all from the from this shaft is substantial goes out here a ways of course the shaft is water filled uh, it's got two prongs goes out here about 15 paces this way and then there's another piece of it that's kind of an oblong shape that swings out towards the road now that's the 222 road, the main road south of Dixie, right out there. My pickup's parked on. Crooked Creek is on the other side of that road. Um, you can see this pullout. This is interesting. That pullout right there. I didn't mention at the great big dump at mile marker 32. That pullout is just down the road from that big dump a little way. So you could pull out in there, walk up to the big dump, walk down to this one. Um, both both properties are you know accessible from the same one it might be part of the same mine I don't know uh, lots of timbers laying here these are probably part of the hoist works uh, for that shaft I think there's something on the history that's been done on this but uh, this again is not an insignificant workings either if you take a look down there little bull courts typical of uh, what they were after but uh, that's the end of it right there and by the way this dump uh, does impinge on the water that's coming down hundred dollar gulch and we're going to go take a sample of the mouth of hundred dollar gulch just as a background sample because there's quite a few properties uh, up in this uh, in this gulch be an interesting one to see just uh, even though you got a lot of properties along it 
these especially these real old ones whether there's been any uh, sign of any problem in the water or whatever so we'll go up and, and get a sample of that and that'll be pretty much uh, the end of it for this show oh no it won't either there's another I want to show you there's another uh, very shallow pit over here I don't know again what they were doing as we walk down towards the road there's a little water filled pit here that also is all boarded up no dump around it so it can't have very much working probably not much more than is than is right there but don't know what that is but it's only 15 feet from the road right there so and there again we're looking up the road just around the corner up there is where that big huge dump is and that spur road that cuts off to the right there is a great place just to pull in park to see both of these properties uh, I'll look back at the dump we estimate about four feet thick on an average you're seeing the the berm of it right there well that's going to take care of this property uh, at the mouth of hundred dollar gulch The next site is War Eagle Mine, site number EC-625. What we're looking at here is the add at one for the War Eagle Mine. It's EC-625. It's located to the west of Fitz Creek, which is a, one of the major tributaries to Crooked Creek, which flows down from the Dixie area. We're looking northwest, or almost straight west, really, um, at the caved uh, portal. You can see the the cave scarp up above there, the lighter material behind the brush. There's really not much to see up, even up close there. It is all falling in. Uh, there's a small trench coming out away from the the scarp there, which is evidence of the adit. There's a a mine car here in the foreground. There's a small seep coming out a gallon or so a minute. Um, it really surfaces just about where I am on the edge of the dump. I took a water sample there to characterize uh, the seepage out of the the adit. The, um, the seep does not really cross much of the dump. It may go just right along the the very edge of it, the kind of the eastern edge of the dump but really doesn't uh, go through it and it just turns into a seep down below on down towards Fitz Creek to the east which will uh, there's a bunch of machinery along Fitz Creek which is just below the the dump of the War Eagle at it one we'll turn around and get a, a look at the what the the dump looks like now for at it one Here we're looking back to the east at uh, the dump for the War Eagle at it one. The, you can see there's quite a bit of scrap metal laying out on the dump. Um, mine rails and, and various and sundry other pieces of, of machinery. Some drill steel float out there in the, in the uh, distant there. You may not be able to really see all of it. We're looking down again towards the east there that's Fitz, Fitz Creek in the in the distance there kind of smoky uh, smoke coming up Crooked Creek from the salmon you can see you may be able to see the ridge in the background there where the where it's uh, Fitz Creek hits Crooked Creek there's a uh, supposedly a mill down there at that location that wasn't found um, it's been burned in a fairly recent past and you really can't see uh, any evidence of the mill. It's just been noted in old reports. But you can see the, the dump goes out. It's flat. It's about 25 feet from the portal, or the supposed portal where the, it's been caved, and about 30 feet wide. It's pretty much uh, just along the hillside. Not a huge dump. Um, you can see a little bit of it from below, from the Fitz Creek Trail, uh, looking up towards where I am but it's really not much of a dump. There's supposed to be about 
Oh, it's been reported upwards of nine addits on this property. And we'll make a make an effort to find some of them. Uh, they just kind of this is probably the northernmost, and they just work their way to the south from here, off in in this distance off out into the to the brush there. There's supposed to be a trail that kind of goes between them. But we'll take a look at that and uh, see what we can find on the rest of them. So this will be it for Adit One for the War Eagle Mine EC six twenty five. What we're looking at here is the upper portion of Adit 2 for the War Eagle Mine, EC 625. The slope is very steep and I believe that this is just a collapse scarp of the Adit. The portal was probably substantially below this point on the slope to the east. I'm not sure. I was down there. I couldn't find anything that really told me that, that, uh, that where the portal exactly was. Like I said, the slope is so steep that it just has collapsed all the way down and washed out. Uh, looking down the slope, there's not really a lot to see. It's so brushed in. It's extremely steep and uh, there's not really anything to see on down below. So again, we just, we're looking at the, the scarp. We're about 500 feet south of Adit 1, the one we looked at first there. And uh, supposedly there's there's upwards of nine reported by the USGS addits at this site or in, in this area. I have yet to find any of the others. I made a concerted uh, search to the south and never located any. Again, the brush is very thick. The hillside's very steep, and if you, unless you walk right on top of it, you may miss it totally, which I probably did. So this is it for Adit 2 for the War Eagle Mine. There are no there's no running water here or any evidence of water at this site so no samples were taken and the dump basically has completely slid down the hill down towards Fitz Creek but never reached it so this will be it for the Adit 2 of the War Eagle Mine EC 625 what we're looking at here is some machinery that is straight down the slope to the east from Adit 1 for the War Eagle Mine. It's just above the Fitz Creek Trail just before it switches back up and heads towards Adit 1. Again, it, this is directly below down the slope from Adit 1. I just thought I'd throw this in for completeness. Uh, this is the trail going up Fitz Creek. We can hear the creek in the background there. It's very brushy in here. You can't already see where the creek is, but the trail's kind of boggy in this location. And see the probably a ball mill and broke open and it came down the slope and various other bits and pieces of machinery. Again, as noted earlier, um, the USGS notes nine adits on this site. All of but one was caved. One was uh, cribbed open, timbered open back a ways. But uh, none of those were found. I found two of the two of the nine. So there's seven of them that are not able. I was not able to locate along the slope. They may or may not be significant. I don't know. I, I couldn't find them. and made a concerted effort in the brush and on the very steep hillside to find them. So this will be basically it for the War Eagle mine. There's a little bit more uh, tin and and uh, scrap metal and such down where close to where Fitz Creek runs into Crooked Creek and I'll get a, some video of that. So this will be it for Adit 1. Here we're looking southeast across the Fitz Creek Trail. We're just about where Fitz Creek enters Crooked Creek. It's downstream from Dixie. Or this is a presumably a cabin or some some sort of uh, building structure, whatever. In this area down here in this flat where Fitz Creek enters Crooked Creek is where I presume there was a mill, a flotation mill of some sort. And this is just some scrap metal alongside the the uh, trail. The uh, the mill structure I I have. I failed to find any th evidence of it out in the brush. It's been burned in here as you can see from all these these uh, snags and such and, 
it uh, the brush is very very thick there is a bit more piles of tin out in the in the brush between the trail where I am and and Crooked Creek which is off over where those rock bluffs are in the distance there uh, so again no evidence of where that mill was located it may have been along Fitz Creek someplace just down below the War Eagle mine it may have been um, right on this flat out here I don't know it would make sense on this flat there's enough room to uh, to build a fairly large uh, complex but again it was never uh, located with a concerted effort going out through the brush trying to to locate something the USGS map shows a uh, structure on the the map itself below the trail just about where I'm at and this may be it again the mill was never found but I will take a, a water sample on Fitz Creek with just above the trail um, it basically is down below where all the the mining activity would have been for the War Eagle that's on up to the northwest from from this point so I'll take a water sample and then uh, that will be it for this this uh, mine The next property is the Mammoth Mine, site number EC783. It's July 31st, year 2000. We're at the Mammoth Mine, which is south of Dixie, Idaho, on the five mile bar, seven and a half minute quadrangle. We're looking down one of the overgrown roads that goes down into a series of pits and trenches and uh, there's little roads and all going all over in this uh, as we recall on this property we're gonna walk down uh, here's the first road that we took that this is actually the second road shown on the um, topo map that comes into the mammoth mine goes down here a little ways into it and ends at a trench there's another little pit over in there we're gonna go down this is one of the larger uh, trenches down in here give you an idea of uh, what they were looking at there is a, a fair amount of uh, quartz in in a schist or schist those quartz anyway in through here as you can see it's a sedimentary quartzite it's all been cooked of course the fair amount of granite in it typical of these kinds of uh, deposits in here and you can see uh, whenever they found like in the trees there that big old quartz vein sticking out they just went right on down it and uh, dug a trench which one happens to be where the road goes on down so most as I recall of what's up here are these uh, trenches and and roads uh, that we have a fair amount of information on this on this particular property we're going to now go over to where the uh, mine buildings were and uh, take a look around in that area. Uh, you can see the smoke up in the, that's filling this whole canyon. Well, the whole Salmon River Canyon today. This is from a big fire that's going over near uh, Bergdorf Hot Springs, over near McCall. But with that, for right now, we're going to go ahead and fade on out of here and go over to the buildings. We're still at the Mammoth Mine, and we've uh, pulled up to where the little buildings are shown on the topo map. Uh, the road that we came in on is right there, and there are two buildings at this site. One down there in the trees, we'll go down and get it, and this little log cabin right here, and both of them look as if they're used. Uh, we went down this road over here by these boards, which are full of nails, and found some more trenches small pits there's also a cut bank down there about 20 feet high uh, in the dirt I don't know if they made that or not there's also another road that cuts back up through there and we're kinda standing out here we'll just pan around around for you a, a fairly open area there was a, another old log building over in here which uh, obviously is all falling down <clears throat> Log cabin, a little bit of junk, few barrels. Piece of uh, 
It's like a bucket of some sort or a small truck bed, a small truck bed, I guess, with an old barrel stove in it. And we'll get a walk down here and get a shot of this little building. Have not found anything yet that is any kind of significant workings. Uh, propped up by this uh, piece of pipe. And it looks as though uh, hunters or somebody is, uh, have been using it from time to time. Got the little doorway propped up on it. Someone's busted off the, the lock. Knocked the door in. Outside of that, didn't look too bad. Had uh, either, looks like a telephone line going into it and an old set of bed springs out here. Anyway, that's kind of what's left of the uh, old mine camp. I thought the last time I was in here there was uh, more to it than this, but that was a few years ago. So from this little building right here, which is the first one you come to, you go up to walk along the road, you come out into this open area. with the other building over there and an open field with some stuff stacked around on the side of it and an old fallen down log cabin over here on the south side of the road. So with that we'll uh, take a picture of the Suzuki and fade on out of here. Next we'll look at the Dixie Royal Mine Site number EC196. It's July 31st, year 2000. We're at the Royal Dixie Mine, which is right off the main road between Dixie Meadows and Dixie. You can see the dump. It's about a quarter of a mile north of the turnoff with the road that goes to Oro Grande from right on the very north end of Dixie Meadows. Uh, as you can see there was an added in here. It's totally caved. Uh, there's some rails here on the dump. Is a small dump. There may have been, this is the old uh, access road, highly overgrown, hasn't been anything up in here for a long, long time. A uh, very small dump, probably 15 feet wide, 10 feet long, and maybe 30 feet on the nose, but uh, as far as we can tell from right in here, not much of any kind of a problem. We'll go scope it out up in there, but my guess is uh, that thing, if it's not caves, it's certainly enough to detract just about anybody from messing with it. So with that, we'll... Uh, Make it nauseous, turn around, and we'll take a shot right down the approach road. We're looking south, uh, right around the corner down there, about a quarter of a mile is the Dixie Meadows airstrip. The next property is the Union Group, site number EC609. August 1st, year 2000, and we're at, we believe, the Union Group Mines, which is in the Silver Spur Ridge 7.5 minute quadrangle in section 25 on or just off of Trail 206. And we're looking at what is the main working here of the Union Group, which is this pit which is probably 20 feet across and about oh maybe 12 feet deep over to the right over there by the trail there's a little trench and right down below here we're gonna walk down and get a picture of it is uh, some other working looks like another little little pit uh, these are not added as shown on the uh, map but uh, this is what you see is what you get we went off and looked for the gold crown mine which is EC 607 which is a little uh, north and west of this pit and uh, never could find it and I think if I uh, kind of uh, 
pan around here a little ways you'll understand why. There's a lodge pole in here by the Jillions. You can't see anything more than 20 feet away. So we're going to walk down the hill now and, uh, and get a picture of uh, that other little working since we spent a considerable amount of time getting in here. And we'll close off uh, fading out as we're looking down into the pit. We're still at the Union Group. We've walked down. There's the dump that we were standing on. You can see through the trees. There's a little dump right there which is about oh, 30 feet below uh, that big pit which is another little trench. And we're looking at another trench in here now which is oh, probably on the order of uh, 30 feet long. And uh, you can see the dump there heavily overgrown. It's been here for a long, long time. Uh, not much going on in here. This is undoubtedly what was uh, looked at as that lower at it. It certainly will look like it from the aerial photography. Dump totally overgrown, totally dry, no water anywhere. So as was often the case on these little guys that just have, uh, we walk through for, that just have a trail coming into them, obviously they couldn't do very much work. So what we're going to do is fade on out on the dump of the upper pit up there and call her quits for this one. Next we'll look at the hematite mine, site number EC601. It's August 1st, year 2000, and we are at the hematite mine, which is in section 11 on the Silver Spur Ridge Quadrangle. It's on Utopia Creek and it's the shaft shown at the end of the road, which uh, I do not recommend bringing your truck in here. You can get it in here it's, and they probably do all the time. It's a little bit easier on the four-wheeler. There's a number of buildings in here and we're going to uh, poke around a little bit in here and see what we can find. There's a collapsed building there. These are the first ones you see when you come in. Uh, the big one, of course, is the what I'm assuming was the over the top of the, the shaft or the mill or whatever it is. We're going to go out and poke around. There's a fair amount of bits and pieces of scrap iron in here. There's three or four properties up in this neck of the woods and that's what we're up here to do. So uh, we're going to turn this off right now and go snoop around a little bit and see what we can find. Well, this is indeed a mill, and uh, it's got some interesting equipment in it. There's a little ball mill, and it feeds into not exactly sure what, but it's a tub with water in it. It's got a belt that goes around. And the feed comes off of the, it's got a diesel motor in here with a takeoff on it to run the belts. Sorry for that little blip there. Belts go around to drive up at the top and drive this Union Iron Works, Spokane, Washington, little ball mill. Pretty slick. We're going to walk up on top and see what's up in there right now. And also there's another little room right down here which we'll go uh, investigate. We're right in back of the, the mill. This is the edge of it here and you can see there's some what look like tailings, some drums and so on down here. Hardly enough to even speak of uh, but we'll grab a sample of it. It's at least uh, Oh, 75 feet over to the creek over there. So, and there's probably nothing in this except quartz, but we'll go, uh, we'll go take a look at it. We're uh, in the mill now, on the other side of it. 
taking a peek into that little room which looked like it was a kind of a bunkhouse or living quarters or something at one time nothing in it now got their wall shored up with tires there and that kind of gives you an overview of what the inside of this little mill looks like okay we're gonna walk up on the top of the we'll go ahead and uh, give you a view there's those tailings as we're looking out the door uh, some wood scrap wire and so on those first buildings we photographed are down there in the back and with that we'll fade out of here Still August 1st, and we are still at the hematite mine. The road is as shown on the Forest Service version of the map, and we're at the shaft, the hematite mine shaft symbol, which is almost at the end of the road. The road ends at what looks like a hunting camp. There's a fire ring and some wood and so on, but, but no junk around it. just looks like a parking place. Uh, here's the, their hoist that they had. You can see a gas motor on the end there, and uh, those that's the, the clutch handles and so on, and the clutch and the brake, and the cable that came off of it, bits and pieces that are left of it anyway. And here it's kind of cool to see one of these things, you don't very often see them. Looks like it's on a car frame, uh, goes into the transmission which is right there with the little stick on it. Oh, there's a transmission right there. Yeah, that's the clutch, I guess. Looks like a double transmission. It's got two transmissions on it. And goes through. It's got the starter on the flywheel right there. Goes through and there's the... Can't have been very deep because there's not very much room for much cable on there. And then the brake assembly on the end. Kind of cool. Uh, We'll turn around, we'll go up here on the dump. And we're looking in what was the uh, the head frame, I guess. However it was set up. And there's the shaft and it's all falling into the shaft. And you can see kind of a, a pit over here. <coughs> and then the dump. <coughs> which they were, they had rails going out, so they would uh, obviously hoist it up, load it onto work cars, and take the dump out the outside. Now this uh, shaft has been fenced, but as you can see, uh, it's completely fallen down. And uh, I, without knowing how deep this is, I would not be wanting people to jump around on that stuff. Uh, we know these things can be pretty hazardous. Well, we're going to go out and measure the uh, the dump out there. Uh, again, I'll show you uh, back. You can see kind of how their setup was. This was a little tin shed that they had sitting over there. Everything, and there's the hoist. Hoist was probably sitting up here on this on this dump, and uh, that's the way they were working at the hematite. Okay, we're going to go around to. Uh, we'll take a look at the dump here and uh, fade on out. It's a pretty good sized dump, as you can see here at the uh, hematite. It's uh, well over 100 feet long, probably about 15 feet wide, and probably about six feet, maybe seven, eight feet average thickness. So they they took a lot of stuff out of that shaft. Gives you an idea of just how long it is, and the uh, shot we took from the other end down there by the head frame and the shaft. And we'll walk down and take a look at that shaft one more time from this end as that's uh, probably as hazardous a thing as we've found anywhere around this part of the world recently anyway. And uh, that one does look bad to me. I wouldn't jump around on it. And you know, as you can see the fence has all been knocked down and the angle iron bent over it so that could uh, that could cause somebody some grief. Okay with that we'll uh, since it's a 
nice thing to look at will fade out on the shaft again. Okay, we're still at the hematite. We're at a at it caved that is about uh, halfway between the mill and the uh, shaft. Or, or yeah, up above. I see I'm standing right on a caved part of it. As you can see, it's caved pretty much all the way down. Part of the portal is still standing, and you can see under the tree back down in there. She's pretty much done the whole way. Uh, pretty good dump out at this thing, although it's heavily overgrown. So uh, we'll take a look at what used to be the portal down there and fade on out. We're standing right above the portal now. You can see a collapsed log building. The uh, road that comes in that's shown on the map is right over there. This is just a little, this is off that road while the dump's almost right on it. Now you can see the class building. That's all dumped there. That's overgrown with all those little trees in there in that flat area. Uh, there is a seep comes out of this. Not enough to, uh, to sample, but you can see there is some water down in there. And there's a part of uh, some of the wood that was left in there that's still holding up that little piece of adit. And we were standing back up in there shooting back this way here on that last segment. So that kind of gives you a good overview of what this, uh, this caved adit looks like. Uh, they, they've, the water goes around the left hand side of the uh, dump over there and I guess probably just disappears into the, into the dump material because there's quite a ways up above Hematite Creek in here. Well, it's not Hematite Creek, whatever that creek is down there. But you can see a fair amount of dump out in here. And we'll measure that off and uh, get some still pictures. As I said, this is about halfway up there to the uh, between the mill building, which is shown in white on the, on the Forest Service version of the topo map or that that area is white anyway and the uh, the shaft at the uh, close to the end of the road just about halfway up that hill so with that we'll take a look at the dump and fade out okay we're still at the uh, hematite mine and we're down we've walked up in back of the uh, mill, which is right on behind us here, we'll turn around straight in a second, and have what looks like a collapsed adit, or certainly a trench in here anyway. I see no portal or anything, uh, but they did put a trench back in there, it looks like, which is all caved. And as we turn around and look, there's a trench over here that was put in and some big PVC going on down through some pipe into the mill and we turn over and look and there's the top side of the mill as we mentioned and there's some uh, sheet steel on the up here at the top which is probably they use for mucking the ore with make it smooth and then there's an old uh, jaw crusher sitting here on a on a couple timbers there again we can take a look at the back of the mill. You can see the belts in there and so on. If we look down towards the ATV you can see uh, timbers and so on laying around the, the mill building. And uh, Utopia Creek over there as I said 75 feet or so down there in that little divide. So with that we'll go down now and take a shot at uh, some of these other buildings. Well, we've stepped down the road probably, well, I'll show you how far. There's the mill right there. We came down the road and we're looking at the inside of that uh, collapsed log cabin. That was a pretty good size uh, building at one time. Not too old. You can see the lock on it. Probably just the last couple winters that uh, 
the old roof finally gave up the ghost and crashed on in. Had a bunch of windows set inside it and so on, so obviously used for storage. Here's an interesting one. Here's an old, probably was a coal cellar, maybe a powder shack, who knows, but uh, had a sod roof on it. And you can see the sod is uh, done very well. It's got trees growing all over the top of it, so they did pretty good there. And then right behind the collapsed building, here's another one. It's uh, seen better days. It's kind of totally trashed out. And that is primarily the, uh, the buildings here at this particular property. We'll draw a little sketch map showing what they look like. So we'll uh, take a look at the mill there and fade on out on this one. Well, we're not quite done at the hematite. I thought since I was down here I'd just give you the video of the whole overview since I'm down here a little ways and there's some other interesting things to see. Uh, there's the sod house. As you can see, uh, logs and rock walls down below and a beautiful sod on the top. Uh, the big fallen down cabin with the other one right behind it. Looking up the road you can see the mill up there on the other side of the ATV. As we walk down here it's kind of interesting over in the trees over there there's an old big boiler laying there. And uh, here's part of a very large, it's the shaker table off of Wilfley table. Uh, looks like it was homemade, but nevertheless, that's what it is. And you can see the different little, those little diamond-shaped blocks there that were for changing various uh, sizes of material to go somewhere or other off the, the shaker strips. <clears throat> so that's kind of interesting. So with that, we'll uh, look at the, uh, the nifty side house and uh, fade on out of here. This site, the Gold Dug Mine, and the next site, the Gold Master Mine, uh, both had the same site numbers in our files, even though they're different properties. So we went ahead and gave this a separate site number for the report purpose and uh, we gave it the site number of B8010002. August 1st, 2000. We're still working in the Utopia Creek area <clears throat> and we're now at the Gold Bug Mine. Uh, the shaft as shown on the uh, topo map, this is on the Silver Spur Ridge Quadrangle. Gold Bugs in section 12, and uh, we'll go up to the Gold Master Mine, which is the last one up here, about a quarter of a mile or so. But uh, this is the main working here at the at the Gold Bug. Uh, you can see a shaft, a fair reasonable size dump. Uh, they've got some depth depth on this thing, probably greater than uh, certainly is shown by there. Um, all of these areas in here, coming up the road, we passed a number of signs. This is the GM claim group, 86, 87, 88, 89. And, uh, can't quite read the rest of the stuff on there. Anyway, wouldn't be hard, too hard to find, I don't think. Uh, there was a log structure with a big uh, boiler in it. Probably uh, the boiler that they probably had a steam steam hoist in here to work this shaft. You see it sitting on uh, some fire brick there. Made. See who it is that made by? Oh, looks like Washington Brick and Manufacturing Company, Spokane, Washington. So there you go. And uh, 
close up of the old boiler. Took all the rods out of it. And that's pretty much it for up here. So uh, I think we'll get a few still shots. You can see that's a pretty good size dump in there though for that shaft. They had a fair amount of material in here. Anyway, we'll get a guesstimate on the dump, write up a card, take a few uh, still photos, <coughs> and uh, probably call her good for the gold box, so gold bug. So we'll go ahead and uh, fade on out here on this rather scenic old boiler. The next property is the Gold Mastermind, site number EC602. It's August 1st, and we are now at the Gold Mastermind, which is the last one at the end of the road, over on uh, Utopia Creek on the Silver Spur Ridge Quadrangle. This one's in section 11. Uh, big, big caved at it, as you can see. Goes all the way on down through. There's a fair number of timbers still exposed at what was the portal. It's down around. There was a fairly large uh, log structure in here, as you can see, all the way across the front. Uh, steel rails and a goodly sized dump. So the cave on the attic belies the size of it. It's a good size in here. There's also, and we'll get them later, quite a few buildings. Uh, this is the road that we came in on and you can see a log cabin uh, uh, wiped out right now. We're going to walk down in there. There's three or four other of these collapsed log structures in here. Right now we'll kind of just give you a a slow panoram around the dump and we're back now looking at the fallen down building which went uh, all the way across the front and you can see the portal for the adit and it's collapsed way back up in there as we said so with that we'll uh, focus on the adit here and fade on out for this segment Okay, this is the collapsed log cabin that we were looking at at the uh, Gold Mastermind. And this is the one we pointed out, which was right down from where the attic is. And you can see my pack, I think, sitting out there. That's the portal building right there in the dump. And so we've walked down the road here. Here's the first of these buildings. And here's the road that comes in. We're at the end of the road, and it is as shown on the on the forest map. So it comes in right there. Now there's a little road here just before that building that we just filmed that cuts on down into a another kind of living area I guess. And uh, hey, quite, a, quite a little complex up in here. There's a uh, big collapsed log cabin that you can see. A little spruce took care of that. Uh, one of those white signs, so this is probably what I say, GM claim group I guess in here. Uh, took, took that building out. We're still coming down in this little road and you can see more log structures ahead of us. Had quite a little enclave in here. These were uh, not insignificant buildings. Uh, we're coming in right off the uh, end of the dump. There's a, looks like a powder magazine or something that they had. We'll take a little better look at that. And we're down here looking at uh, another large collapsed building. Uh, two of them actually. 
two frame buildings in here, or <laughs> frame, log cabins. And there's another one in the back there that you can see on the just on the other side that has fallen down. Now we're looking at the uh, end of the dump. We were right up on the top of it there, and we're walking over to this other log building over here, which looks like it might be some kind of a of a mill. So it's got some equipment out here. Indeed, it was. Uh, there's where we were standing right up there when we were shooting the pictures from the mill. So this log structure came right off the end of it. And there is what is left of a Wilfley table. And in here, all quartz, uh, all of these properties we should have mentioned in here. If you take a look up there, that's where we were standing up there on the end of the dump. And uh, Lord really knows what's buried underneath all of these logs that have collapsed in. But there's a piece of uh, pretty good looking Wolfley table sitting there, what's left of it anyway. Uh, what they were using to crush the ore with or whatever, we uh, have no idea. Again, this was a relatively small table. We'll walk down and see if we can find uh, any info on it. Should note if you want to know what they were after, this is it right here. This is all of it for this whole area. These uh, iron stained quartz veins all carry a little bit of gold in them. Uh, they were crushing something there, some relatively fine stuff that they had before it would have gone out on the table. Little uh, mining history here preserved. And we saw the uh, box for the big one down below. But they see no, no name on it anywhere. So we don't know. Anyway, here it sits. Way up here on Utopia Creek. Okay, well, we'll give you one more shot. There is a big water pipe. Let's go over and take a look at that. There's a water pipe coming out over here. I have no idea what it does. It almost looks as if this uh, coarse grain, I've seen this in a couple of other places. You see all this coarse grain stuff that's underneath the dump? It's almost like uh, they plastered some of this stuff or something in here at one time. Kind of odd. Or ran it as a placer or something, I'm not sure. Anyway, I don't know where that pipe goes, but it uh, wanders back up in there. And you can see here we are off that coarse end of the, the coarse dump. Uh, again, looking back at those two buildings that we photoed, videoed here just a little while ago, gives you an idea of what we're looking at. Uh, with that, I think we're pretty much, unless we find something else, you pretty much get the idea that there was a fair little operation up in here. And so we'll uh, kind of focus in on that old Wolfley and fade on out of here. The last site we looked at in the Dixie area is the Utopia Mine, site number EC603. It's August 1st, 2000. We're at the Utopia Mine, which is on the Silver Spur Ridge Quadrangle, right up on the top of the ridge, showing as a shaft, just off the 205 trail. And uh, indeed, it is here. Um, <clears throat> can see it looks like she's uh, well, probably about as deep as it, uh, justified by the small dump, as you'd expect, since there's no road up here. We're looking at the whole thing. It's about uh, well, probably 10 feet across, maybe 12 feet deep, counting the counting the dump material on the side. Uh, orange flagging on this. Uh, so the state or the uh, Forest Service has probably been in here. They also have marked a trail up here. There's the flagging of the tree. That's uh, orange seems to be this, the stuff that their uh, AML people are working on or working with. Uh, so that kind of wraps up uh, this area for the um, 
Utopia Creek drainage and the, its properties up there. A uh, fair amount of uh, workings as we've seen, although these are all very old. Uh, yet now they have all been duly recorded. And so with that we will uh, gaze into the depths of the Utopia shaft and fade on out. This concludes tape two of two tapes of the video report on the study made in the summer of 1999 and 2000 on abandoned and inactive mines near the town of Dixie in the Nez Perce National Forest. 